yet another oscilloscope I picked up uh, on an online auction actually this week. I've been looking at other online auctions just to see what's available because eBay is quite often a rip-off. Um, so I had a look through and found another couple of um, like um, companies that tender for other companies. So basically you go to this company and you place a bid and uh, they basically look after your bid. You don't know what the bidding's like. You've got no idea what anyone else has bid. If anyone has bid at all, it's um, they call it a tender bid. Um, so what you basically do is you see the item you're interested in. You make uh, make a bid, uh, and then wait to the end. So, for example, the starting bid on this particular thing was twenty quid, uh, and I could I did know that there was a couple of other bidders on there, or eight watches, I think it was. So I bid the one, the money I was willing to pay for it, and then you don't hear anything. You don't get any emails. You don't get anything. It's a bit strange, actually. Uh, anyway, uh, came the end day bidding, which was on the sixth of July, and it just sent, they just sent me a bill saying, "Please pay now." So I assumed they'd, uh, I'd, ex I'd won the bid, uh, and then uh, you sort of bit sort of. Harry Fairy sort of contacts with the people to say, uh, could you send it through postage? And I used to get postage for sort of like twelve pounds. It wasn't particularly well posted, but it's um. This was all uh, ex-government equipment, and uh, this is a. Uh, I know you're thinking, what's he want another bloody scope for? Uh, I don't really. But this, the difference between these scopes is this is an analog scope. All the other scopes I've got in the in the. Um, in the workshop, apart from the uh, old tele equipment, which has only got a bandwidth of 20 meg, uh, this is an analog, real-time scope. Um, so it's it's good. It's better for certain things, and it's certainly better for radio um, and stuff like that. It's certainly certain things that analog scopes are great. So this is the 2445. Um, looks in pretty good condition. There is a one problem with it. I'll show you in a moment. Um, it's a four-channel scope. Um, but I use that term loosely because um, it's a sort of like a cut down version of a four channel scope. It's got uh, these two inputs uh, you've got a choice of half a volt per division or 0.1 of a volt division. Now that's fine for most things because you probably only need it for sort of like uh, triggering or something like that. You could probably put a, lo a logic signal on there or something like that. But it's uh, basically, it is a four channel scope, but it's uh, as I say, very limited. No idea if it works. It's sold as a, you know, sold as seen. Uh, so the first thing I need to do is uh, to have a look, show you something else. And when I was looking at it last night, I noticed there was a big ding here in, in the in the bottom of the case. Now I've actually tried to pull that out, but he made it worse than it already was. But this big ding here looks like a piece of equipment's hit it and punctured. So what I need to do, first thing that I need to do is get the back off. It'll slide the case off, straighten that out, but just also make sure it hasn't damaged anything on the circuit board. This could be the reason why it was a, uh, uh, you know, not put out for for sale because it's no longer working. And I'm not too sure. Uh, and you see here, it's got the uh, it's been used in a, an army base or something like that. It's got the uh, crow's foot here, or the uh, means it's been issued for the army. Uh, oscilloscope basically says oscilloscope set and the weight of it and the serial number. So the first thing I'll do, I'm going to pop the screws out the back um, and just see what that if that did do any damage to any of the circuit board because uh, I'm not going to power it up without having a look. It doesn't feel like this has ever been apart actually. So, so you can see it. So I've got the MOD stick on the back here as well, I see. Now, I don't know when, oh this screw is a bit loose, I don't know when they stopped using these sort of scopes, but probably back, well they've actually probably been up, using them up to fairly recently, for most things. Ah, screw it tight. screw here so this screws will kind of come out. I 
assume. Check posts on the back for um what is it? Channel two output. Oh, that's quite useful. External auto in. I don't know what that is. Just trying to work out what we need to take off to get the panel off. Integrity seals are pretty solid on these, actually. to try and work out how to get the thing apart. That integrity seal is being very stubborn. Like it's hit around here somewhere. So we've got these uh, like these hybrids here. Looks like it might have actually just hit on the hybrids, which I mean, shouldn't have caused any problem at all. Hopefully, it looks all right. Just checking, to see where it came. Yeah, it's around here somewhere. It doesn't look like it's done any damage, so that's that's a good start. So the next thing to do is we'll try powering it up, see if it does anything. So say so no idea this works. You know, this is a chance you take with these sort of bits of gear. It's in nice condition inside, no, no dust or anything. Plug it into the supply. Four fail. Diagnostic push A B. Trig to exit. Oh yeah. There's A B trig. It's take you an hour to find everything where everything is. A B trig. That's it. Okay, so it's failed of some form of calibration. So let's we can get a channel up. Are we running? Sweeping? Uh, intensity, scale elimination, bandwidth limiter. So let's go to try and find a free run.
besonders. Don't sure if I've got a free running scope yet. Mode. Oh, there's an auto. Should have a Oh, so that's not position, is it? Where's position? That's, that's calibrator. Trace. Ah, oh, here we go, position. Okay, it's, yeah, it's right off the end of the scale. Yeah, there's channel 2. Channel 2 is good. Pops a bit. A bit dicky. So channel 1's stuck off scale. Oh, there's channel 1. So it looks like it's got a balance problem, possibly. Yes, yeah, so there's definitely a problem with channel 1. Try channel 3. Yep, yeah, channel 4. Turn channel 4 on. Okay, so it looks to me like oh, it's starting to come back now. It's strange. So it's the sentry position, it's all pulled over to one side for some reason on channel 1, but I'm not sure what that is. Now there's pretty a calibration um, diagnostic program. It did come up with an error message. I'd have to look into that and see what that is. Uh, but it's, it looks it looks like it's working. Let's feed a signal into it and we'll see what we get. Let's take a signal in from the uh, flip signal generator. It's got 50 ohm input as well, that's nice. Let's go AC. Channel 1 is grounded. Oh, there's a waveform. It's going to take a little bit of getting used to. Okay, so it's displaying a waveform now, and funny enough, it hasn't got the offset anymore, so that's weird. Maybe it's just the cap's been reforming or something. So there's channel one. Okay, we've got a bit of a icky switch there, I think. That looks fine. Definitely got. Something a bit dicky there. The pot needs cleaning. Let's try channel 2. Turn channel 2 on. This is a bit of a new learning curve with this. Turn channel 1 off. Volts per division for channel 2 is 5. Okay, that looks good. Same, same thing with the time based jitter. That's probably just, as I say, uh, switch content needs cleaning, or maybe something else, maybe a dry capacitor or something. Let's try to be triggering with channel 2. There's channel 2, that's a source selected down here.
sure that is that switch actually, that's something in the vertical amplifier I think, in the horizontal amplifier. Okay, so we're trying up channel 3. In the channel 3 I'm going to have to turn the gain right down. There it is. Trigger on channel 3. Looks like that works. Channel 4. Trigger channel 4. It looks like it's working, it's just obviously got this bit of a jitter with the time base. Not sure what that is. Uh, it could be a bad connection somewhere. Um, go around tapping the board. It could be a, a connection on the CRT is dodgy. Um, you know, the, uh, the horizontal amplifier. It seems to work. Um, we seem to have just check out the DC balance again here. Turn the one back on. Chambon's balance is back to normal. So, it's like a working, quite a nice scope. It's also got measure with cursors, I think. Uh, let's have a look. I've got readout and intensities up. I'm not sure how this works. works but we have got cursors for auto setup recall and saves it's we've got any recalls here not set not set not set uh, do you reckon it's not set okay so there's no nothing there um now where are your cursors That's a nice feature for, for, for cursors. It's got a slightly noisy uh, encoder where they turn the brightness up and it just drops suddenly. So that's just a bit of contact cleaner. Um, so far, it looks like it's a working scope. Um, so it'd be nice to do a bottle. The next thing to do is bang that dent out of it. Um, I'm going to set the astigmatism and focus up. Uh, just to get it as sharp as possible. It's a, it's a little bit soft. These scopes tend to be a bit scoffed as well. Soft as well. They're um, like the uh, two, two four four zero is the same. It's got a sort of like a slightly softer uh, trace. It's actually quite a nice sharp dot on there actually. But these pots are all all need cleaning. You see the way it jumps about. Pretty good. So yeah, that's the initial look at the uh, Tektronix 2440. As I say, a fully analog scope. Um, it probably just needs a bit of service, um, and then we'll um, put it through its test.